Alright, welcome everybody to the first part of my new series in which I'll be showcasing some Empire Wars build orders. So, in case you don't know, Empire Wars is a game mode where you start in Feudal Age with a base already built and like 27-ish villagers. And it's a lot more aggressive than standard random map and we have some big tournaments that also use this game mode, namely Red Bull Volo, which is a $30,000 tournament that is already having its third edition in January 2021. And the beautiful thing about this is that uh, Red Bull also offers uh, prices to people who play in the qualifiers like hoodies and um, gift packages and whatnot. So even if you don't get into the main event, um, the many, many people that compete in the qualifiers uh, might actually get some nice loot for themselves. So um, I decided to create a series of build orders I collected over the time. Uh, and uh, showcase them to you because I feel like there is just no Empire Wars build orders out there on the internet and I feel like, um, you know, in case you want to compete in Red Bull and um, try to get some nice rewards for yourself, you might be in the need of some uh, fairly polished Empire Wars build orders. Now that being said, Empire Wars has a much less developed meta than uh, Random Map does, so many many of these build orders might not be perfectly optimized, yet they are quite efficient still. These are all build orders the expert players were using, and I'm taking those from publicly accessible recorded games. So I'm not revealing any secrets of expert players over here, all of these recordings are also publicly available. So. Today, I'm going to showcase uh, Vikings Eco Heavy Crossbow and Knight Approach. And uh, what you see over here on the screen is when you should and when you shouldn't really use this one. I don't really want to go into great detail of this right now. I will do that at the end of the video. And I want to focus on the build order first and then discuss it. But long story short, um, just to get a quick overview on when you can actually use this build order. If your opponent is uh, playing archers and he's playing f quite passive, so he's just making archers back at home and waiting, this is a build order you can actually use to punish him quite hard. If your opponent is opening scouts and your map is easily vulnerable, this build order also works nicely, but could be exposed to aggression if your gold mine is not safe or your map is not vulnerable enough. And uh, it is fairly common as well that in Empire Wars, the your opponent uh, starts with skirmishers. I'll talk about that later, at the end of the video probably. Against the skirmisher opening, this can also work nicely, but I will actually have to give you details on that a little bit later. Also, worth pointing out that uh, this build isn't really great against mezzo sieves, because uh, their Eagle Warrior Switch could be something that is really threatening to this. But uh, against the majority of the sieves, this actually works very, very nicely. So, why don't we just uh, go ahead and get into the build order itself, and then we'll have some discussion at the end of the video. So, what I'm going to be using for this one is uh, a recorded game in, from a best of 21 in between Doubt and Nili. This was played a couple of days ago, and it also contained a bunch of Empire Wars games. Doubt is playing Blue Vikings, and uh, Nili is playing Red Vietnamese. So, two clear archer sieves over here, and uh, we will see why this is going to work well for Doubt, but in a nutshell, Vikings economy is one of the best in Empire Wars. And because of that, um, even if your army isn't as, as good as the opponent's army, like Vietnamese having better HP on their archers, for example, your economy can just propel you to victory over here. And that's exactly what we're going to see here. This uh, Build order is a very very defensive at the end until you get to like early castle age, but then from that point on, it actually converts into a very very aggressive build order where you have to use your uh, eco advantage to gain an upper hand over your opponent. So, um, as you see on the right side, I actually had a script over here for this one. I will post this one in the description or the comments below, so you can actually um, copy paste it for yourself and use it in the future. So, with that said, I think it's uh, time to get going. And I'm going to do slow-mo start at the beginning so that you actually can observe everything that is happening because there's a lot of things happening here in the first few moments and that's all very, very crucial. So, um, I want to give you a notice before we actually jump in there that you already start with 12 villagers on Vood. If you add it up, it's 12 villagers on Vood. And uh, if you would actually compare this to a standard archer's build order, you would actually find a very similar villager count. So. What we already see from this one is that you don't actually have to adjust your Wood Voyager count at the very beginning. But anyways, 
um, let's get going. So the first thing that you're gonna do is queue one villager up in the town center, send the sheep to your TC and send the villagers below the TC to get the sheep. Then you're going to use two villagers to make the archer range from gold. The reason why you do this is because uh, you don't need a lot of gold right now as long as you're not making archers. So that's where you start off with. Then what you're gonna do is uh, get your first villager out and that is going to start making houses and start walling up your base. In Red Bull, um, the goats are actually revealed so you don't have to scout for them. In the meanwhile, you probably want to aggressively scout your opponent um, to see what he's doing because as I said, this builder is uh, somewhat weak against certain matchups and because of that you need a good information about the opponent. So when the archer range goes up, you are going to start queuing archers over here and you're going to start adding uh, villagers to sheep over here as you see um, Doubt's rally point over there. You add two wheels to sheep. Uh, in the meanwhile, Doubt is getting double bit axe already. This is a very important upgrade uh, to get. So when you can afford it, um, you're gonna grab a double bit axe as early as possible basically. Um, then when you can afford it, you're gonna be going for horse color as well because you prefer not to build farms before actually grabbing horse color. This villager that you actually sent this is the first villager you made. It's actually going to build three houses in total. And you're going to add uh, two villagers to sheep for a total of uh, seven. Then you're going to start adding villagers to berries and grab horse color. So at this point, you're going to have a very, very reliable food income. You already have an archer range that is going to start making archers, as you see. Um... The next step will be to slowly start adding uh, farms of the villagers once horse color kicks in. You prefer to start adding these as early as possible, but without actually crippling your archer uh, build. So you prefer to keep making archers over here. Um, then you're going to have to start walling up your base because by this time, if you take a look at your own archer range, you already have an archer out soon too so your opponent is probably gonna have the same army as well so he's gonna start moving towards you the villagers you send to berries you can also start to make farms with them but you prefer to keep about four villagers on the berries uh, basically all the time you can actually keep five over there as well this villager that you made at the beginning is gonna start walling and you're going to pull uh two more villagers or maybe even three from wood uh, to wall up um, but you want to keep at least 10 villagers on wood so no matter what, you keep 10 on wood and you're going to use uh, about 3-ish villagers uh, to vote up. So after you sent 5 villagers to berries, um, you should have around 9 over here because you start with 4 on berries and then uh, you add 5 more. So it's 7 right now for doubt and he's going to send 2 more over here. After you made those 5 villagers on berries, you will send your villagers, uh, your newly created villagers to gold to a total of 8. As you see, Doubt is pulling uh, a lumberjack from this wood line to wall here and a lumberjack from this wood line to wall over here. You always uh, pull villagers to wall from the closest wood line to potential walling spot. And uh, you also keep adding archers while you're doing this. 4 villagers on good gold should be more than satisfactory to keep adding archers over here of course um when you actually do this in real time there is a lot to do so this is actually very very fast this is just three minutes game time so this is actually a lot of apm required for this one to really be able to execute everything perfectly but what you're going to have to notice is that your food eco is already pretty strong you already have vikings and uh, this gives you the free wheel barrel you're going to have a quite strong farming eco with horse color, um, good wood eco with double bit axe, and you already have a bunch of archers over here. And you see that your opponent is going to arrive around this time. So you already have a decent amount of archers, you are more or less void, and you already have a very, very strong eco compared to your opponent. So here's the catch. You are actually in a position to make a stable very soon if your opponent is pushing you heavily with skirmishers. But that completely depends on the scenario. We're going to talk about that in a moment. So once the five villagers were sent to berries, 
and uh, you start adding farms with those as well, you're going to send four more villagers to gold. So you're going to have a total of eight. And you're also going to send uh, one of the walling villagers back to gold. And uh, these two walling villagers, once they finish with the walls, they'll go back to wood. So four more to gold. And uh, once you have it, you should be able to click up to Castle Age very soon. So this is a stable that you can actually make if your opponent is pushing you with skirms and you're afraid that you might get overrun by that. It can also be archers and skirms for your opponent and it is also um, possible that you add this stable to battle that. This is something that you can skip if your opponent is playing very very passive. So it is completely fine if you skip this one, you already have the buildings to pick up to Castle Age. And if you look at Dautico right now, um, eventually once he has the 8 villagers on gold, He's gonna be able to click up uh, in a matter of seconds. He needs to squeeze in one more villager, but this also depends on uh, how you actually go up. So you can add one more villager to wood, so you are gonna have a total of 14 once these walling villagers are also done. So, after this, you should have the eco to click up into Castle Age without any problems. You do have a nice little uh, group of archers, and... Uh, here is when this build order is actually going to turn into an aggressive one. So at this point, when you click up to Castle Age, what your eco is supposed to look like. You should have 8 villagers on gold. You should have about 6 villagers on berries. You should have uh, about 11 on farms. You should have uh, 14 on wood. Right now Dalt only has 13, but this walling villager will actually go on wood as well. So that's how your eco is supposed to look like when you click up to castle age next up is uh the process of going up into castle age so you want to be able to play aggressive with your archers once you get up to castle age so you're gonna grab fletching you're gonna get the gold mining upgrade because um that's an eco upgrade that you will need you will have a very very gold heavy army over here and once again if you feel like your opponent has a lot of skirms you can add some scouts over here but this is not necessary in this case um, you can conserve the food and wait until you can get knights. That's also a possibility. But gold mining first for doubt. That takes priority unless you have to take immediate fights. And then when you can afford it, you're going to squeeze in uh, fletching as well for your archers. Um, this is the kind of one of the bad moments of this recorded game. Because this is not something that is supposed to happen uh, when you're playing. You should be void by now. Doubt actually made the mistake of having a hole over there. And this would actually cost him the game here. This could really cost him the game because this is a very, very greedy build order. So this really relies on keeping your archer numbers high until you get up to Castle Age. This build order starts to become a beast when you get up to Castle. And the reason why is because you will have a very strong food eco. You will get a free hand cart with Vikings and you're going to have crossbows. And once you get up to Castle Age, your eco is going to be like absolutely insane compared to your opponent's economy. So... Um, while you're going up, you still um, prefer to keep adding archers over here. And uh, as you see, if you're getting pushed by skirms and archers, feel free to make some scouts. If your opponent has a lot of uh, archers in the party, you can actually make an argument for getting plus one defense as well once fletching is finished. If it's mostly skirms, you don't necessarily need plus one defense for your scouts. And you're just going to use those scouts as kind of a meat shield. Um, you will have to start to add farms with your bear villagers slowly as well. But eventually you should have around 70 on food. You're also going to send some villagers to hunt. You're going to see Dao doing that in just a moment from wood. This might not be doable if you are actually playing uh, on a map where your hunt is exposed. In that case, instead of sending 4 villagers uh, to hunt, you can actually send 2 or 3 on farms and keep 2 on wood. So instead of sending 4 from wood to mill the deer, you can actually send two or three from wood to make farms. That also works just as fine. So if you have your uh, hunt that you can take, I massively recommend taking it. So this is why this build order works quite well against the skirmisher plus archer play. Your opponent is going to somewhat struggle getting through your walls. You might need to do some house walls behind. So right now Lily isn't pushing this one with a huge power. But doubt he might be forced to make a, uh, a house over here to reward this one but the point is that you don't want this arch army in your eco if they get in there you might lose the game and this is what you're actually going for 
you are going to try to beat your opponent into Castle Age with a strong Viking economy. And now you will have a Crossbowman upgrade. You're going to have Botkin Arrow as well soon. And you're going to have Knights. And Knights will soak up a lot of Arrow Fire. Even if they don't have plus 2 defense, um, they will be completely devastating to Skirmishers. And you will have a nice combination of uh, Botkin Arrow Crossbows, Knights, maybe some leftover Scouts as well from Feudal Age. And if you look at the Voot Count of Doubt, this is going to be completely satisfactory to drop additional Town Centers. And with the food eco he has, he's going to be able to start adding a huge amount of villagers. So you combine a strong army with a very, very strong economy. The real danger of this build order is that you are quite exposed in Feudal Age to aggression. But anyways, um, Doubt is going to make a thing that he shouldn't make over here. You will see that he's going to unpop his archers and take this fight. This is not something that you should do. He's going to have Botkin at least for this one. But preferably you want to wait um, until you get Crossbowman upgrade with your fights. The reason why Doubt is taking it over here is because he still has the scouts and the knights out there on the field and he's able to just destroy Nili's army over here before that would actually become a Castle Age threat. But the key thing is that once you get up to Castle Age you have to play aggressive. Because remember that you were only making archers on one range. If your opponent was massing archers on two ranges the whole time, if you just sit back and chill with your army, your opponent is going to have a good Castle Age time as well, and he's going to have better army numbers than you. So you want to be able to capitalize on your faster Castle Age over here, get the crossbows in. Uh, in the meanwhile, eco-wise, from this point on, you're adding all your villagers to wood. You're going to grab also once you can afford it, but you probably prioritize uh, Botkin Arrow and Crossbone Upgrade in this one. So, by this point, you should be running out of your berries. These villagers will also add farms. You still keep 8 villagers on gold. That's going to be your gold villager count for a fairly long time. And you just send all your villagers to wood. And if you see, Doubt actually drops an archer range over here, but he's going to change his mind. And he's going to go for the full eco approach. And you're going to see that the real strength of this build order is going to be the insane economy of the Vikings player. So, you have a strong army right now. Your crossbows are well upgraded. They're missing armor, but this is something that Doubt could actually afford to do. He's gonna have uh, knights out with plus one defense, and he's able to start pushing his opponent, who is preferably not, you know, not even up in Castle Age. So, it depends on how greedy your opponent is playing. If your opponent is just sitting back chilling, and doesn't make a lot of army in uh, Fuel Age, he might also be up to Castle Age by now. But in that case, you're just gonna be adding the two TCs and you're gonna have the better eco with the Vikings because Vikings eco because of the free hand cart is like crazy. 18 villagers with hand cart on food for doubt is uh, perfectly fine to make free TCs working over here maybe even um, add some knights in the process. So at this point you already have uh, Boso, you already have gold mining upgrade 1 you will have three TCs very soon. You probably prefer to add one of the TCs on a gold mine. Doubt goes for two wood lines here, which is fine in this case. But you probably prefer to add one of those TCs on a gold mine. So, if your opponent is not up to Castle Age, jackpot. Because you are going to have a much, much better army. The knights will be able to soak up damage from skirmishers. And your crossbow should be able to clap your opponent's archers. In Empire Wars, where the resources are often exposed, this is a great chance for you to try and push your opponent's gold mine. It's a great chance to try and loop around and pick off villagers on wood lines. This is your chance to do damage if your opponent isn't up to Castle Age. If your opponent is up, well, you can still try to take some reasonable engagements, try to flank around, get a hit on the wood line, get some villager kills. And uh, in the meanwhile, Doubt is even adding Heavy Plow and a second range. So from this point on, this is basically converted into a double range archer play. You're going to keep adding your crossbows, but you also keep making villagers on free TCs and send all of them to wood. Once you can afford it, you are going to be able to go for uh, ballistics very, very soon. And uh, well, after that, you should be able to have a nice little edge in terms of economy. So if you look at this, this might be small numbers over here, but right now Doubt has 50 villagers, Nili has 42. And Nili isn't playing this one bad. Nili is playing uh, with a civilization that has a strong eco, but not as good as the eco of Vikings over here. This is just full Viking eco power. One of the reasons why Vikings is one of the best Empire War civilizations 
if you see statistics from previous Red Bull tournaments, Vikings is one of the most banned civilizations because it's so strong on Empire Wars. So from this point, you pretty much play this one as a random map game. You have uh, multiple options. If you are getting pushed by a lot of skirmishers and for whatever reason you lost the battle and you're getting pushed, you make a defensive siege workshop. If you have the upper hand in the battle, you make an offensive siege workshop. If you feel like um, your opponent is very, very good at microing and you might want to grab ballistics first, you have the option to do so as well. But basically, from this point on, it completely depends on how your opponent is playing this one. What you have to keep in mind is that you want to keep adding villagers over here and double range archers, especially with the knights supporting to just soak up some skirmish fire, maybe snipe some mangonels and have a great boom behind. And once you have this eco, you are going to be able to progress towards Imperial, which is one of the biggest strengths of Vikings in here. If you look at Doubt's resources right now, he's making free TC Voyagers, he's making Knights, and he already has 400 food in the bank. So, basically, his eco is so strong that he's actually getting close to clicking up to Imperial over here. Whereas if you compare it to Nili's resources, Nili is uh, just adding TC number 2 and 3. He could have added a TC before uh, if he skips University. Sure, but... He probably wouldn't be on free TC's booming. If you look at Nili's food count, it's only 11 Voyagers on food. So, it's not because Nili's playing this one bad, it's because uh, Vikings just have a crazy strong geek over here. The free hand cart is like an insanely important upgrade um, that they are getting. And this way, you can actually convert uh, your build into a very, very eco heavy build. Once you have uh, about. Um, I think around 25-ish Voyagers on wood. I think I have it in the build order. Yes, I do. So, let's switch over there. Once you have like 25 to 28 Lumberjacks, you can actually make a second uh, mining camp, another gold mine. So, you will go up to like 13 Voyagers on gold. Honestly, based on what I've seen in this game and the fact that Doubts is going to be a little bit low on gold, I feel like you can even add two more wheels to this gold mine. And uh, once you can afford it, you can get the second gold mining upgrade as well. Once you have like 25 villagers on wood, you can actually start making farms um, with some extra villagers instead of sending them to wood. And of course, depending on where your siege workshop is, you can actually play with uh, mangonels if you are able to push your opponent offensive mangonels. If you're getting pushed, defensive mangonels uh, work just as fine. So... Doubt is going to get the second gold mining upgrade over here very, very soon. And if you just look at his resources, this is why this build is so, so beastly. That you are able to boom at 3 TCs and still float the 500 food and make a reasonable amount of army. And other sieves are just not capable of doing this. Vikings eco is absolutely stellar. And once you're able to get up to Castle Age, Vikings will really become a powerhouse civilization in this one. So you are going to see that uh, Doubt, once he grabs the extra gold mining, he's going to be able to click up pretty soon to Imperial. This is why I said that I feel like two or three more extra wheels to gold would have been better for Doubt over here. Just to make sure that uh, he's going to have the gold ready to click into Imperial. Of course, um, while you're doing this, you prefer to try and take fights as well. So you don't just sit back and chill with your army. You try to play this one aggressive. And... Uh, Make sure you don't lose your army, like, uh, don't do stupid things, you don't have to overcommit because you're supposed to have a stronger eco. But you prefer to try and loop around, get some Voyager picks on wood lines, try to pressure the opponent's gold mine. And uh, if you see this, Doubt is just grabbing ballistics and gold mining and he's very close to clicking to Imperial. Now in terms of tumbling timing, it completely depends on uh, what the game looks like. If you feel like you are able to finish off your opponent, or if you feel like you need to take some engagements and you might be outnumbered, grabbing Tumbring is completely legitimate. So Doubt could easily afford grabbing Tumbring over here, but he prioritizes Imperial. I feel like if you don't need to immediately take fights, you can skip Tumbring and work towards Imperial because the benefit you get from Imperial is much, much larger. You're going to have Arbless, you're going to have Bracer, and Arbless aren't stopped by Mangonels. Crossbows will probably be very inefficient against Mangonels unless you have Godlike Micro. But Arblast will just eat mangonels. So what you are working towards here, if you are Doubt, and if you're a Viking player, is a faster Imperial. At this point, you still keep adding Voyagers to Wood. You keep around 13 to 15 on Gold. 
and you're gonna start adding vultures to stone. And the reason why I add vultures to stone is because you want to be able to drop a castle in the near future. You shouldn't need that castle to click up into Imperial because you made a siege workshop and you made a uh, university for ballistics. So you have the buildings that you need to click up into Imperial. As you see, Doubt is a little bit low on gold. If you need, you can actually get a market up and balance out your eco. Once again, this completely depends on the game situation. So you should be able to click up to Imperial. And I really just want to show you that... Once again, Nili didn't do anything wrong here. It's just a matter of Vikings eco. Nili is pretty low on resources. The Vikings player is just stagged. It's 1,000 1, food in the bank for Doubt with 23 on food. Nili has 21 on food. And he's got 5 food in the bank. Of course, he has some villagers queued up over here. But this adds for like 200 food-ish. So, just a so much better food eco from the Vikings player over here. The freehand card... The fact that you can squeeze in Heavy Plow because you already have a very strong eco by the time you reach Castle Age is just all huge in this one. And from this point on, you're just gonna try and get to Imperial and not lose your army numbers. And uh, you're going to see that this game ends when Doubt reaches Imperial. But if it didn't end, it would probably be a snowball. And the reason why it ends is because Nili understands that once Doubt is up to Imperial, this is game over. But let's assume that the game doesn't end uh, when you reach Imperial. In that case, you grab Arblast, you get Bracer, and you grab Chemistry. You probably prioritize Arblast and Bracer over Chemistry, but you prefer to have uh, resources for all three. So you need to kind of stockpile about about a thousand food and seven hundred gold by the time you get up. The other thing that you can do is add additional ranges, so you can keep adding crossbows. But you probably prefer to add the like two more siege workshops and start making rams because the real power that Vikings grab in early Imperial is the Arblast and Siege Ram push. So, what you want to capitalize on when you get to Imperial is not just the Arblast, it's also the kept rams and then Siege Rams, and just finish off the game with Arblasts and Siege Rams. Um, by the way, that was some beautiful Doubt Micro over there, deletes the Mangonal, but misses the shot, so that didn't work out as he intended. And if you look at Doubt's stone count, by the time he gets to Imperial, he's going to be able to drop a castle, and the reason why that's important is because you get to Imperial, you're going to have a huge number of orbs. Your opponent is probably going to be still in Castle Age. So you should be able to win fights without any problems. And you can drop a castle wherever you want to. So um, when Doubt reaches Imperial here, let's say, he would actually be able to go for Arblast. And finish off this army and then just drop a castle here in Lilith's face. And that would be the end of that gold mine. Now, this is not exactly what Doubt is going to do. In fact, Doubt is just going to take that fight over here, which is something I do not recommend doing. You just want to wait until Imperial with the orbs. But, well, I think the real eco strength of uh, Vikings is really shown by the fact that Doubt is going to be able to take a kind of inefficient fight against Elite Skirms. These are also Viking Elite Skirm, or um, Vikings. Vietnamese elite skirm, so they have more HP, uh, and still win the game without any major concerns. The other strength of this build is that, as you saw before, Doubt actually went for uh, the knights in this one, and because he went for the knights, he also has uh, some support against the skirmishers. So it's not just a pure archer play, you also have some auxiliary units here um, in the form of knights. Your primary unit is still the crossbowman. But you prefer to have uh, some knights as well mixed in if your opponent is very, very heavy on skirmishers. Doubt, by the way, is winning this fight partially because he's on a hill. But look at this. He's fighting crossbows against elite skirms. And he's still going to win this fight uh, quite decisively. Of course, he has some knight support. But this is still a very, very decisive win for Doubt. But even if he didn't win this battle over here, he would be up to Imperial. If you look at Nili's resources, he's nowhere close. So at this point... The Viking Eco really starts kicking in. You have 86 villagers for Doubt and almost up to Imperial. He also idled his TC sometime so he can click up. Nili is at 79 but not even close to Imperial. And at this very moment Doubt is reaching Imperial. His resources aren't perfect because he's a little bit low on food and gold. Bit too much on wood although that wood doesn't really hurt because you want to make some rams. But a little bit low on gold if you're Doubt. But he's gonna be able to grab Arblast and Bracer. And the reason why Nili taps out is because, number one, he lost his army, but more importantly, even if he had his army here, it's 20 orbs for Doubt 
something that a castlage army isn't really able to stop. Um, plus two, plus two knights will die to Arabs. Crossbows, even elite skirms, will not be super, super great against that when you have uh, Arbalest, Brace, Rent, Chemistry, and for those Arbalests. And Doubt, at this point, he could make a castle. He's able to go for Rams. And you can really see why this build order is so strong. It's because once you get up to Castle Age, you are going to have an insane economy lead. And if your opponent is just making archers just like you do, even if he's mixing in some skirms, you're going to have some knights that is actually able to push away the skirms relatively efficiently. And there is no way that your opponent is going to catch up in eco unless you mess something up really, really badly. Because the free DC Viking play here is just going to give you a huge economy, a good early Imperial power spike that is able to finish off the game for you. So one thing to note is that this build order is extremely greedy. So if you've seen the Fuel Age of Doubt, that's actually very, very passive, very, very defensive Fuel Age, and you could get punished for it if you are not fully walled or if you have an exposed gold mine. So you really have to keep in mind that if you mess something up in Fuel Age, you lose the game immediately. So you really have to be like crystal clear with your Fuel Age defense, with your walls. You have to have a safe gold mine. Like this is actually considered safe for doubt. Um there could be way worse gold mines. So, like, let's say if you have a primary gold like Nili, for example, if we would go back to the beginning of the game, Nili doesn't have these buildings over here, so this would be a quite exposed gold mine. It's not so great. If you have to make a defensive tower, well, you might not be able to afford free TCs. So, this build order is actually good if you have a well-vulnerable map like, like Doubt does. Safe wood, save gold. In that case, this is a very, very good combination of uh, having a strong Castle Age army that can maybe even decide the game alone. But if it's, if it's unable to do so, you're going to have an insanely strong economy behind this one. So let's go back to my original points over here. So it works well versus a Skirmisher opening. And the reason why it works well against the Skirmisher opening, first of all, why would someone go for pure skirmishers when they open Empire Wars? Um, I'm going to make a build order on that as well, but uh, in a nutshell, if you're up against a clear archer sieve, like Vikings, and you know that you might not be able to match the archer numbers, or for example, in the case of Nili, you know that your eco isn't good enough to match with Vikings. So if you do the exact same thing, let's say both of you go for double range archers, you're going to lose because the Viking player has a much better eco, probably gets a better castle each time, and uh, probably able to afford uh, making more crossbows over here on the field. So if you are up against the sieve that has a much better eco, for example, then you probably have to make something happen and not just go for uh, a double range archer play and try to mirror what the Viking player is doing. And because of that, it's fairly common that in Empire Wars, the players will open up with uh, a very, very skirmisher heavy play at the beginning against clear archer sieves. So if your opponent is like Ethiopians, if your opponent is like Britons, oftentimes uh, players open up with uh, skirmishers, so you get a nice early advantage in those fights. After that, they will probably start mixing in archers as well. But the reason why this build works relatively well against the skirmisher opening is because skirmishers don't do a lot of damage to your villagers. They don't do a lot of damage to walls. So you will probably have your chance to wall up your base without any problems. Against passive archer players, the reason why it works well is because you're going to beat them to castle age and you're going to have a lower amount of crossbows than they have in terms of archer numbers. But the archers will just be lower quality and crossbows with botkin will eat the archers over there. So if they are just making double range archers and sitting back uh, chilling, waiting for castle age, you're just going to go up to castle. You're going to have crossbowmen first. You either take a fight at their base and lower their archer numbers, or if they're playing ultra super passive, you're just going to be a happy, happy Viking boomer and drop your free PCs and uh, just start booming. And you're going to beat them in economy. Uh, like, it's extremely hard to even keep pace with the Vikings in Empire Wars. If you have seen previous Red Bull events, you're going to see that, that it's just crazy strong economy. Um, scouts opening, it can also be useful against scouts opening if your map is vulnerable. Reason is relatively simple. Scouts will not be able to get through your walls if you do appropriate revolves. So even if they are attacking your walls over here, you can make a house behind. 
as long as your opponent isn't mixing in something that is ranged and can actually prevent you from walling behind your walls, this shouldn't really be uh, problematic for you. And once again, you're going to have the better eco. Now, when does this um, does, doesn't does work? It doesn't really work well if uh, your opponent has uh, a mezzo save, for example. And the reason why it doesn't work well is um, quite various, let's say. So... For Aztecs, Aztecs actually produce military a lot faster, and that actually allows them to go very, very aggressive in their early Feudal Age play. So, as good as this works against passive Archer players that don't really push you in early Feudal, this somewhat struggles against very aggressive Archer players, let's say. So, an Aztec player that sends forward an Eagle Warrior and three Archers could actually be really devastating to you, because you're probably not going to be evolved in time, and you aren't really going to have the army to take a very very good engagement and you might just get overrun by superior amounts of archers in fuel age. The biggest weakness of this build order in fact is their fuel age. It pretty much sacrifices uh, military production in a fuel age for getting a good castle age time, get a good power spike with crossbows and be able to afford a crazy economic boom. So really if your opponent is playing very aggressive fuel age uh, it's not gonna be so great, and the Aztecs are perfect for that. Mayans have cheaper archers, so once again, they can afford to just flood archers, pretty much, in Feudal Age and push you away. And Incas, they don't have any military-related bonuses here for their archers, let's say, or their eagle play. But one thing that they have in common with uh, the other Mesosivs is that they have access to eagle warriors. And the Mesosiv eagle warriors, which is something that this could actually struggle against. Because if you take a look at this, your primary unit is still crossbows, and your knights are only auxiliary units. Especially with Vikings, you don't want to go very, very heavy on knights, because you don't have amazing upgrades for those. And if your opponent is making an early castle age, let's say triple barracks, eagle switch with Aztecs, you might find yourself getting overrun by eagle warriors, and maybe even a few monks that can convert some of your knights. So, against Mesosivs, I'm not a big fan of this one. Uh, mainly because Viking Knights aren't super, super convincing. They aren't really very, very bad, but you probably not prefer to have uh, Knights versus Eagle Warriors, especially if uh, the Eagle Warriors are just flooding the map. And the third thing that you also have to keep in mind is that this build order requires you to have a safe gold mine. That's, that's a must. I tried this one in practice games myself, and I figured that if your gold mine is exposed, and you play this, you die. Because there is no way you protect that gold mine. If you have to make a defensive tower, you already probably forfeited at least one TC in Castle Age. Because you're gonna have to mine some stone. There's no guarantees you have a safe stone that you can mine. And uh, y if you can't do a consistent Voyager production from at least two TCs, but preferably three, opponent has a chance to catch up with this. So you really need a safe gold mine for this one. You prefer to have a safe wood line as well. Because if you just have, let's say, this wood line and this wood line, your opponent can come in with archers and pressure you, and once again, in Feudal Age, you're extremely exposed. Once you get up to Castle Age, you are in a very, very nice position, but as long as you're in Feudal, you might be exposed to a very, very aggressive play to your opponent. So, that's something that you always want to keep in mind when doing this. So, in a summary, what we can tell about this build order is that this is actually a very passive and defensive Feudal Age build order, that kind of sacrifices Feudal Age military production for a better cast stage time, they're really capitalizing on the strength of the Vikings, which is crazy eco in late Feudal and especially from cast stage on with the free hand card. You could see that Doubt was able to squeeze in um, Boso, Heavy Plow without any problems. He was able to keep free TCs working with double ranges and uh, a stable working. That's a crazy economy for him and still beat uh, his opponent into Imperial by a massive margin. So, if you are playing this, as I said, I recommend that you only play this one if you have a safe gold mine, preferably safe wood as well, and a well available map. And uh, that is a little bit hard to evaluate because, uh, you know, you only have a few seconds at the beginning of the game to decide what you are gonna do. If you feel like your gold mine is a little bit more exposed, I don't recommend this play and uh, you probably prefer to go like double range archers or archers and skirmishers but also depends on what your opponent is going for i'm going to keep making uh, additional empire wars videos so 
In case you liked it or in case you have some feedback, please uh, let me know in the comments below. And uh, in case you liked the video, I greatly appreciate if you share it with your friends. And uh, this might be very, very helpful to you in case you want to play in Red Bull and get some nice prices for yourself or in case you are um, playing on the unranked Empire Wars game mode in AoE 2. I want to add that in Unranked Empire Wars, the settings are a little bit different. So, for example, your sheep aren't revealed. So, this build order, like the start when you send your sheep to the TC immediately, is uh, specifically made for Red Bull Volo 3, in which your sheep is already discovered. But, who knows, um, if Red Bull is hosting events in the future, um, like Red Bull Volo 4 maybe, and I assume they will, because so far the first three events were very, very successful, then there is uh, a very good chance that this balance is going to remain. Still, as you see, this is a very, very strong play. And uh, Vikings, one of the best Empire Wars civilizations over here. Strong eco play. And uh, if uh, you're able to defend nicely in Feudal Age, this is going to snowball the entire game for you. So, in case you like this, um, I greatly appreciate if you share it with your friends and drop a like to the video. And uh, also... In case you don't know me, because this might be the first time you're here on this channel, I am uh, casting Competitive Age Vampires on Twitch as well. Link will be down below in the description, so in case you want to visit me, um, feel free to do so. And in case you want to just download or copy-paste this uh, build order script for this build order, um, you can also do that. It's not an easy build order to learn because there's a lot of things, especially in the first few seconds of the game. You have to make a Voyager, you have to make a double bit axe, you have to make a range, um, start voling. So there's a lot of things to do. But in case you want to start, you know, um, experimenting with Empire Wars builders to become a better player in this game mode as well, um, I think this is uh, a great place to start. And uh, yeah, once again. Thanks for watching and hopefully you have enjoyed and you found this useful. In case you did, I greatly appreciate uh, if you share it with your friends. Although, who knows, maybe you won't share it with your friends because it's so good that you don't want uh, them to clap you with this. Anyways, thanks for watching and see you next time.